Hi, I'm Kim and you're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. Before I get going with this video, I just want to take a moment to thank our friend Tanya very much. Tanya, I really appreciate your donation to our channel's PayPal account. Your donations keep the channel going and keep the channel growing. Thank you. I want to make a quick public notice. Uh, as I mentioned in another video, I did get a new computer and I am not so computer savvy, so I've had to really kind of rework my settings to try and improve the quality of the audio. Another problem I've been facing here is the hard surfaces in my home. Of course, I live in Mexico, so my home is built from concrete. My exterior walls are concrete, my interior walls, all my doors are aluminum. I've got loads of big glass windows with decorative iron on the outside. My floors are all, you know, heavy ceramic tile. And then, of course, I got all marble countertops. So I've got nothing but hard surfaces. I did go buy a lot of fabric. I'm sewing curtains, I'm sewing throw pillows, but unfortunately, that's just not making a dent in the ricocheting of the sound here in this hard surface environment. Now I've moved the computer into my bedroom and I am sitting on my bed because it is absolutely the largest soft surface that I have in the house so I am hoping I've worked out the sound issues. I put up a video the other day with Hillary Jacobs Hendel. The audio is terrible and I'm very sorry about that. But Hillary has agreed to do another video with me, so I'm very excited about that, and we will be doing that soon. Now, in this video, I want to talk about a word that came up, because I have been doing interviews with really enlightened, critically thinking experts in the area of narcissistic abuse. A.J. Mahari, Hillary Jacobs Hendel, and Rinda Smith, and I will have the footage up from my uh, very candid chat with Rinda soon. But during these interviews, and it wasn't even during the interviews that I noticed the word. It was later when I was editing, and all three of the women mentioned the word. And I've never done a video on it, though it is an emotion that I most certainly have. The words disgust, and I want to talk about the emotion of disgust today. I definitely believe that part of my job here at the channel is to be observant, and something I've observed is countless victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse not becoming angry, not ever reaching a point of disgust, and often people remain in a state of sadness, and I know this all too well, because during the five years that I was with Trevor, yes, I'd left and come back and gone and back and in that revolving door. Many, many times, on average, a victim will come and go seven times. I do believe I'm at nine, and why I was so easily hoovered, why I so easily fell back into the trap was because I was in an absolute overwhelming state of sadness and heartbreak, absolute suffering and misery. I believed I loved Trevor. I believed I missed him. So when the opportunity to go back came around, even if I saw the red flags and had that sick feeling in my stomach, and I know many of you have had it when you went back, uh, you kind of reach a point where you are expecting the worst, and most certainly I had that. But an inability to see the anger in the situation, to reach a point of anger about the situation, and my inability to reach a point of disgust, which I do believe disgust is going to be the next natural emotion uh, once you find your anger, I never had that. I was stuck in sadness, heartbreak, misery, a longing for the narcissist, feeling this soul tie, this trauma bond. But once it ended, and once I got free, I then, well, I was sad for a while, that's for sure, but once the sadness, the anxiety, the stress, the depression, the frustration, all of that kind of simmered down, and a healthy anger erupted from that, wow, that was pretty liberating stuff, and once I became angry, the next natural step in that emotional string was disgust, and Disgust seems really natural, like it seems like the way you should feel about a narcissist, but not everyone feels disgust. So many people remain in sadness and heartbreak. So I started doing some research on emotions, and most people, through research, uh, do experience emotions the same way. 
If something is frightening, we immediately feel fear. But disgust is not like that. Disgust affects different people different ways. In fact, they've determined that there are two different types of people when it comes to experiencing the motion of disgust. There are some people that are instantly disgusted. These people tend to be less tolerant, less compassionate, less forgiving. But we're not talking about that group, are we? We're talking about empaths and empaths by nature have empathy. They have a heightened sense of compassion. They're more forgiving. They're more understanding. They're more tolerant. They're willing to sacrifice more of themselves. And in many ways, an empath is not going to want to feel a sense of disgust towards another human being, even if it is warranted. So this puts empaths in kind of a precarious situation because though they should feel disgusted, they should feel a sense of repulsion, of odium towards the narcissist, they quite often don't. In many ways, this reluctance to reach a point of disgust towards a narcissist speaks volumes, not about what's wrong with an empath, but what is right about an empath, what makes empaths so truly valuable on this planet. They are slow to reach a point of disgust, but if you do not reach a point of healthy anger and a subsequent feeling of disgust, you could very likely leave yourself open to staying with the narcissist to continue trying. You could very likely get Hoover back easily, even though every warning sign's going off. I do believe that a healthy feeling of disgust towards someone who is absolutely disgusting, odious, vile, uh, is natural. We should feel that. So if it's not coming to us naturally, how does an empath get that bulletproof vest of disgust on so they have that healthy level of disgust so they can recognize the narcissist for what they are. They can be disgusted by what is truly disgusting behavior and say, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm not beating this dead horse no more. I'm leaving. I'm done and stay gone. How does all of that happen? when the emotion of disgust is not coming naturally to us. Anger. I think the emotion of anger has to first be reached. Now, when you are sitting in sadness, as I had been, and you start looking out at the abuse, not all of it is one giant picture because it's just a mountain and it's overwhelming, but when you start to break it down to the initial targeting, I mean, this covert, sneaky, creepy way that you were targeted. When you start to consider the lie, the deception, the disordered thinking that led the narcissist to create this fake self, to mirror you, to trap you, this lie that they were your soulmate, that they were going to be there for you, all of this should be pissing you off. The fact that they are notorious for cheating, not just cheating, but cheating on the wrong side of the tracks where it becomes a very high likelihood that a victim or survivor is going to contract a sexual disease. This is disgusting. The way they put you up on a pedestal just to kick the pedestal out from under you, to start to manipulate you, mind control you, and use you to feed their dead empty soul. The fact that you were not a unique human being to them, but nothing more than a source of supply. And by supply, I mean they targeted you to destroy you, to break your heart, to crush your spirit, and to suck the soul right out of you. This stuff should be pissing people off. Isolate us, leaving us with zero as far as the support network goes. Uh, omitting our family and people we love. They steal our money, they destroy our careers, they smear campaign us, they lie to us, they lie about us, and then they triangulate us with other people. When you start to consider all of this, you should be angry. The fact that they launch flying monkeys against us, the fact that their attack isn't bad enough in their minds, no, they recruit other maniacs to attack us too. All of this should be making people angry. And then after they do all of that, 
the relationship ends abruptly, they dump us, and then you check their Facebook page only to see three days later they're getting married or moved in with someone else. I'm going to tell you, in my case, Trevor hadn't even changed the sheets on the bed. I'd leave in the afternoon. Somebody else would be in my bed that evening. All of this should make us mad. And then they try and come back. They hoover us back like nothing happened. And then we'll try to mind manipulate us into believing that the shortcomings in the relationship were really our fault. All of this should be pissing people off. And once you do reach that very raw, very authentic, and very natural emotion of anger, as it is warranted, I do believe the next step, the next emotional step is disgust. To think about the difference between the emotion of sadness and the emotion of disgust, well, there's a lot of gray space in there. And to be honest with you, for me, when I was sad and heartbroken, I was much more vulnerable, much more susceptible to going back, being hoovered. But once I reached a point of disgust, well, come on, seriously. Who wants to cuddle up with someone that disgusts you? Nobody wants to make kissy face with someone that you feel a sense of repulsion towards. I mean, once you've reached a feeling of odium towards somebody, I mean, you don't really want to wake up in their arms. I mean, this is a whole different ballgame. And I believe that reaching the emotion of disgust is going to be a real game changer for anyone who's still in the relationship, still trying to save it, still blaming yourself asking as I did. What could I have done differently? Could I have worded that differently? Could I have been a better partner? I mean, once you're disgusted, you really don't fall back on this type of mind noise because, well, truly, you're disgusted and you simply don't give a shit. Okay, so recently Trevor hoovered me and many of you have reached out in emails and asked me, hey Kim, you know, how are you feeling? How do you feel about that? I got to tell you, I felt a little bit reluctant to say I felt a sense of repulsion. I felt disgusted, completely grossed out, like yuck. I guess I didn't want to admit that I actually feel a sense of repulsion towards other people if we can call them people, but the truth is this. Trevor repulses me. I feel an absolute sense of overwhelming disgust for the creature. Your narcissists disgust me. They make me feel bleh, puke, yuck, get that thing away. That female stalker that's been harassing me and criminally slandering and defaming me here at my own channel for a year and a half, bleh, puke, absolute disgust and repulsion, as I should feel. When someone is committing the most odious, mindless, disordered acts against you, when someone is really stepping up and showing you that they are disgusting, you should feel disgusted. Guys, I know it's hard to come to a point of disgust for another human being when you're an empath. I found it hard to even admit that I felt a sense of disgust towards him. But I think it's important that we reach a point of healthy anger and the subsequent emotion of utter disgust because I know this makes me bulletproof from future hoovering or future narcissistic attacks. Why in the hell would I want to hang out with someone, know someone, talk to someone, be involved with someone that causes a gag reflex in me, that causes me to feel a sense of repulsion and disgust? I believe that this is a big puzzle piece and I hope today each and every one of you will consider where you're at emotionally and whether or not you've reached a point of utter disgust towards your narcissist. Guys, I love you lots. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you're having a great narc-free day.